COVID and a racial uprising and a string of supposed retirements, Amanda Nunez remains our only constant. The UFC's dual division champ solidified her GOAT status, defeating Felicia Spencer at UFC 250 to defend the women's featherweight title. There's not much to say, really. Spencer got busted up for five full rounds. At least she made the final bell, which is more than Ronda Rousey, Misha Tate, or Holly Holm can say. But for Nunez, she's now the first and only UFC champ to defend two titles while holding them simultaneously. That's something the UFC's first ever dual division champ, Conor McGregor, never got to say. And if we believe him, he never will. The Notorious One has retired for the third time. Hey guys, I've decided to retire from fighting. Thank you all for the amazing memories. What a ride it's been, stated McGregor on Twitter. And to make it more legit, here is a picture of myself and my mother in Las Vegas post one of my world title wins. One guy who believes Connor is the also retired Floyd Mayweather Jr. Because of course he does. The world's richest boxer and McGregor's one-time opponent couldn't help take a jab as he fished for another possible money fight. If I'm not mistaken, didn't you tell Mike Tyson you could beat me if we fought a second time? Now you're quitting? I thought you wanted to beat the best, Mayweather asked. Well, if you decide to come back, I will be waiting to punish you again. McGregor's retirement comes on the back of fellow superstar John Jones's supposed abdication of the light heavyweight title due to a financial dispute. And now the BMF champ Jorge Masvidal is disputing the pay split between fighters and the promotion. NBA, NHL, baseball, they make, I think, 50%, Masvidal said, of the financial split for the other major U.S. organizations. Mine is like 18%. That's a pretty glaring difference, especially when Masvidal is a top guy. The one man who should be concerned about the recent unease is UFC President Dana White, who addressed the issue directly. You don't have to fight. We're not going anywhere. You can retire. You can say, I'm not going to fight. You can do whatever you want right now. Nobody is pressuring anybody to fight. And if Conor McGregor feels he wants to retire, you know my, my feelings about retirement. You should absolutely do it. White has reason not to be too concerned. Fight Island is now official. It's in Abu Dhabi, and the fights lined up for the COVID-free getaway are outstanding. UFC 251 will host Kamaru Usman and the surging Gilbert Burns for Usman's welterweight title, the Alexander Volkanovsky-Max Holloway rematch for Volk's featherweight title, and for good measure, Jose Aldo versus Petr Jan for the vacant bantamweight strap. And that's just the first event. Plus, this little trilogy is now confirmed. Miocic versus Cormier 3 for all the marbles at heavyweight. There's plenty of good times ahead for the UFC. To boxing. Top-ranked CEO and longtime promoter Bob Arum successfully brought boxing back to the States this week. That's despite the U.S. suffering the world's largest coronavirus death toll with over 100,000 fatalities and counting. It is something that is a contribution because people are battling this coronavirus, but they still have to lead their lives. Uh, nothing gives people enjoyment like live sports, whether it's boxing or football, or something like that. Oh, I think it, it, it's something that is important service that we're giving the public. The card was headlined by hot prospect and WBO featherweight champ Shakur Stevenson's first win at junior lightweight in the first live boxing event since the lockdowns began in March. And to the Black Lives Matter movement, Unified heavyweight boxing champ Anthony Joshua made a speech at a rally in his hometown in the UK, where he called on communities to stop the spread of racism. We can no longer sit back and remain silent on the senseless, unlawful killing, sly racism of another human being based only on what? Their skin color. 
We need to speak out in peaceful demonstrations, just like today, so well done, Watford. The recent protests began in the wake of African-American man George Floyd's death at the hands of white police officers. Reading a speech written by a friend, Joshua implored listeners to stay focused on peaceful protest. George Floyd, we're all aware of his name, was the catalyst in a list that is already way, way, way too long. But ask yourself a question. How does the looting for the latest flat screen TV help him or his family? How does burning down shops and taking another life stop the virus from spreading? And remember the virus we're talking about is racism. And this past week marks four years since the passing of the greatest Muhammad Ali, arguably the most recognizable sports person in history. With speed, power, an iron chin, and an irrepressible personality, the three-time heavyweight champ transcended sport and captivated the world. But in his later days, Ali used his fame and influence to promote peace around the globe until he finally succumbed to Parkinson's in 2016. He was 74. There were some spectacular finishes at UFC 250, and quite rightly, four earned a 50K performance bonus. Cody Garbrandt, Aljamain Sterling, and Sean O'Malley decapitated their opponents with different techniques, while Alex Perez ended his opponent in the first round with leg kicks. Leg kicks. Thanks for watching. And remember, if you want more fight sports in your life, just hit the subscribe button.